Welcome to eCommerce TV. My name is Soren Spenninglund and today we're taking a look at the catalog structure in eCommerce 2.0. So what I've got here is uh, Umbraco installed with eCommerce 2.0 and let me just switch to the eCommerce section. So the catalog structure inside eCommerce 2.0 is a little uh, more complicated than what you usually see. So at the topmost level we've got the store level each of the stores are individual uh, shops in your system that you can configure individually using different profiles. Clicking on the store, you'll see the various configuration options as the store name, the host name that it will actually use, the currency that the, the store will use, email profile, uh, determining with, what the emails will look like, order number series, and so forth. The way that e-commerce works is by adding a store to an existing content site. So let's say we've got a content site like this inside uh, Umbraco. If we assign a host name to the to this particular um, site, we can do ucommerce.de, choose a language, let's go, just go with English here, and we can close it. Now if you go back to the catalog section inside ucommerce, we can go ahead and mate the catalog site, the sorry, the content site with the catalog site. So here we'll just choose that uh, host name we just selected and save the store. With that, with that done, we've got our store added to the content site, so you can actually start using product information inside your existing content site. Underneath the actual store level here, we've got the catalog level. So catalogs are a handy way, way to actually uh, segment products in different ranges. So let's say you, you want your, your spring catalog and your fall catalog, for example, or you want your services and your products separately, you can do multiple different catalogs at this level. On the catalog itself, you control what the global pricing will be. So if you've got multiple price groups configured inside eCommerce, you can just go ahead and select the one that you want to be using uh, as the default. You can see as well that, you, that we've got um, an integrated langu language layer available, so you can go ahead and um, target your site to different uh, languages. Languages created or configured inside uh, Umbraco will just show up here inside eCommerce by default. Drilling down another level, we have the categories themselves. So at this level, we actually start to have products uh, being added inside the structure. Uh, if we click here, you can see for the software category, we ju just got the one uh, product available. Um, but you can add as many as you want. You can do uh, your categories as wide and deep as you want. So you can go ahead and have a thousand different categories at the root level um, and as deep as you want. But just bear in mind that you want to keep it simple for the customers to figure out. On a category, we've got a lot of different attributes that you could go ahead and select. Common attributes, media, images, that are actually stored inside Umbraco using this picker here. Uh, we've got the products themselves, and again, this language layer that we saw earlier. Drilling down uh, the last level, and we've got the product itself. As you can see, we've got a lot of information available as part of that product. Uh, what's interesting about products and categories is that um, the product doesn't actually uh, reside in just one category or in one catalog or in one store. You can actually go ahead and share that product across many different stores and catalogs like like here we've got our eCommerce product available uh, as part of the my store de inside the eCommerce catalog and inside the software and support uh, categories but if i go ahead and uh, check off the category 5 down here it will actually be part of my store.se as well products and categories uh, the, the information available as part of products and categories are handle via uh, something we call product definitions or definitions for short. So for uh, individual categories, you can go ahead and add custom data fields uh, to your category. So if you want additional images, if you want a flash video, if you want something uh, that, that will help customers more easily understand what's inside the category, you can go ahead and, and change the product definition for that particular category. So let's drill down into the settings section down here and we can take a look at those. So definitions, as you can see, we've got the category definitions here, and you can do as many category definitions as you want. And whenever you create a new category, you attach this definition to it, and that will decide which fields you actually have to play with. So in this case here, we just got one, prop 21, and um, it's a data type called size. And you can you can go ahead and select different types of um, 
uh, data that you want to edit for this one. So in this case here, it's just a rich, rich text. Uh, and you can go ahead and select it as being a multilingual uh, property as well. The same thing goes for categories. You can have as many product definitions. Uh, the same thing goes for categories, products, sorry. You can have as many products as you want, uh, product definitions rather. And for each product type or definition, you can have separate uh, information available. So if you, for a product, for example, a software product, you may want a separate set of information as opposed to uh, support where you want something else and again, something else on the service. And you can just go ahead and, and select which type of product definitions you, uh, you want when you create um, your new product. So let's drill down into our software product and you can see here, We've got some custom pr uh, properties that are set up as variants to downloadable and the license are set up as variant properties. And that means that we actually get this variant pane here. Um, and that is, that is it for our catalog overview. Thank you for watching.